So you're thinking of moving to Tampa. Well, today, Jason and I are gonna go over all things you need to know before you make your move. We're gonna go over the pros and the cons, the good and the bad, the things we wish we would have known before we made our move. We relocated from Kansas City a few years ago and we absolutely love it here. But today, we're gonna discuss the pros and the cons of living here in Tampa. Absolutely, now Tampa is a city at the top of the Tampa Bay and it's right across the bay from St. Petersburg and it's got a population of just over 400,000. Yeah, and we have people relocating from all over the country. We've got people coming from California, Illinois, and even New York City. Again, we're gonna be going over everything good and bad of what's going on in the city of Tampa and this will help you to determine if it's a good fit for you and your family as well. So let's get started. So if this is your first time to the channel and you want to know everything there is to know about living in Tampa Bay, subscribe below, hit the bell for notifications so you can be the first to know everything going on in the current market here in sunny Tampa Bay. My name is Jason and this is Amy and we get calls, texts, and emails from people just like you looking to make the move and transition to Tampa Bay, Florida all the time and we absolutely love it. So whether you're looking to move in nine days or 90 days, give us a call, shoot us a text, send us an email, or set up a meeting on Zoom, and we would love to help you and give you all the information to make a smooth move to Tampa Bay. Again, we're gonna go over everything that's going on in the city of Tampa, Florida, so you can know if it's a good fit for you and your family. So let's get started. All right, so what are the good things about living in Tampa, Florida? So one of the most amazing things is the location. So we are located right on the Tampa Bay and really close to the Gulf of Mexico. So we have amazing beaches. Some of America's top beaches are right here in our backyard. We also can get to other areas of the state because we're centrally located. We can get to places like Disney and Orlando in under two hours. We can get across to the other coast, to the Atlantic beaches in under three hours and we can get to Miami in under four hours. So being able to travel around the state is an amazing thing because you can go take many vacations anytime you want to. And just like a lot of people say, you live where most people want a vacation. But if you do live here and you don't want to jump on a plane every time to go to a vacation, you can drive down to so many locations around us because of the location, which makes it pretty phenomenal. Yeah, we absolutely love our location and just having the opportunity to explore the rest of the state. All right, so let's go over pro number two of living in Tampa, Florida. So pro number two is our entertainment and things to do. We really could talk about it all day, to be honest, but we're gonna limit it and try to do a broad overview of all the things there are to do. So first of all, I wanna start off by saying, because of our amazing weather, the um, amount of things that you can do outside all year round are endless. And so that's probably my top thing about living here. But there's also things like amusement parks, bush gardens, we have a water park, Adventure Island, and you can use those all year round. Um, there's other things, we have festivals and parades and events like that throughout the year, and they're also outdoors. So I think that's a big pro of being able to do some of those events outside. Absolutely, and the river walk is super popular. There's a lot to do. There's boat rentals, jet skis, all kind of things to do on the river as well. And there's always a party down there as well, and you can do so many things like that in the tiki parties. Yeah. So. There's also, um, we have a channel side district, so you can go down there. That's really close to the port, and there is an outdoor um, recreation area, lots of food places. I mean, really, all the time, there's something going on in the city. You are not going to run out of things to do. There's another city called Ybor City um, that has a lot of nightlife. It's really popular. You're always going to be able to find live music outdoors. Um, these are just things that are ongoing here all year round. And don't forget, it's not Ybor City, which some people make the mistake of, which you know, I'm not critiquing anybody, but the locals here want make sure that you know it's Ebor City, not Ybor City. Just a side <laughs> note. And a pro tip on the uh, Bush Gardens and Adventure Island, 
is you can buy annual passes there and because it's so close and it's not really a drive like we had back in Kansas City to the theme parks, um, you buy the annual passes and you take your family whenever uh, you know the park is less busy and that makes it so just about year round you're going to a water park or the uh, theme park which Busch Gardens has some amazing rides that our boys love to ride as well. Yeah. And then um, I would say another uh, thing that is really amazing here is our food. So the city of Tampa was ranked as top 10, right? It was in the top 10, mm -hmm. number 10, I think, for um, being one of the best foodie cities. So a really neat thing about the area is that we have a good melting pot of different cultures. So you're gonna be able to find whatever type of cuisine you want. and trust me there are plenty of choices you're going to be able to go all over the place there are restaurants everywhere and like i said that's another thing outdoor dining so we love that just sitting out enjoying the nice weather in the evening especially and having dinner okay so let's move on to pro number three which is an obvious one which is the weather and something that a lot of people Obviously, it's it's truly one of the magnificent uh, aspects to living in Florida is the weather because it is almost tropical all year round. Yeah, it's almost always a beach day. So definitely it's sunny. Um, your winters are going to be mild. Summers do get a little bit hot, but you know, we have license plates here in the state of Florida that are called endless summer license plates. So if you are into summer and you love summer as much as I do, you're gonna love the weather. Absolutely, and the heat and humidity is not always a factor. I think there's some parts of the state of Florida, especially inland, it can get sweltering and, and the humidity can be high. But as we've noted, uh, when we compare it to Kansas City, sometimes and many times it's hotter there than and more humidity than it is here. So we're excited about that and we love it. Yeah, and you know, another thing to mention about the weather is that um, we're close to the coast, so we always have a breeze coming off of the shore and that's really nice and helps us stay a little bit cooler. So another great thing about the weather here in Florida is that we have mild winters. A lot of people come down here just for our winters to get out of the freezing cold. However, I must say you are going to need a jacket and maybe a coat. Um, when we first relocated here, it was so funny. Jason decided to get rid of all of his winter clothes and then he was freezing in the winter. So. Don't get rid of all of your winter clothes. That's a pro tip. <laughs> and make sure you have a jacket and some uh, sweaters and pants because you're probably gonna need them a few times over the winter. But not more than one pair. <laughs> all right, so let's move on to pro number four of living in Tampa. All right, so the beaches are pro number four and one of my favorites you are under an hour to some of America's most beautiful beaches. We have turquoise water most of the year and powdery white sand. You're not gonna find anything else like the beaches here on the Gulf of Mexico, anywhere else in the United States, unless you go to like Maui. <laughs> and um, it definitely feels like a tropical paradise. You know, it's not, um, we don't have waves, so if you're a surfer, that's not gonna be it. You know, it's not gonna be your thing, but the beautiful beaches are definitely a pro of living in Tampa. Um, we have a couple of beaches that have been rated in the, like as number one, we have Clearwater Beach and Clearwater Beach is gonna be your more touristy beach. And you're gonna, it's the only beach that has lifeguards. And so they have a big lifeguard station and they have the lifeguard um, huts and things like that. And then there you're gonna have a bunch of cabanas and things like that, that you can rent. Um, and then there's also Pier 60. So Pier 60 is a, a long pier um, and you can fish on the end of it, but you can also just go on to view and things like that. And then in the evenings at sunset every night, they have street performers and artisans. And that is a really neat thing to go uh, check out. I love it personally and I live here. So um, definitely something you, know, you wanna see. And then St. Pete Beach is um, another beach that is really popular. And actually Clearwater Beach is the furthest north in the beaches. And then St. Pete Beach is the furthest south on the beaches. 
And um, St. Pete Beach is actually the beach that we visited for the first time um, when we came to this area and fell in love with it and decided to move. And so St. Pete Beach um, offers a really large beach um, and you're also going to find things like a water slide and um, a lot of fun things to do on that beach and then there's the Don Caesar uh, hotel it's a big pink historic hotel that is really popular um, they have restaurants and a spa that I've gone to that's really nice and then out on the beach they also have like a little um, they have grills and little beach bars and things like that. So definitely a top pro for living in the Tampa area. So rolling right along with the pros of living here in Tampa, Florida, number five is the economy and the opportunity here. Here in Tampa, we have a thriving economy. The city of Tampa was listed as one of the top three cities in the country for relocation, with the majority of relocators coming from New York. This is per National Association of Realtors in the second quarter of 2023. One thing that's continuing to make this a very competitive market, it did slow down for a, a short bit, but it's picking right back up where it start, where it left off. And that is the low inventory. We still have an incredibly low inventory of homes for sale. So even though the home prices can be higher than other areas, a really neat thing is that we don't have any state income tax. So that offsets the cost of the home when you're not paying a state income tax. The Tampa job market is growing slightly faster than the US average. Besides the tourism, some of the top industries in the area are finance, healthcare, supply chain due to the port. We also have a huge presence of technology and cybersecurity. And one last uh, portion is the digital marketing year. We also have several colleges and universities. The city of Tampa is also home to the University of Southern Florida and the University of Tampa. Now let's move on to the cons of living in Tampa. The number one con that we have for you is insurance. So in Tampa, insurance can be a little bit tricky. Um, if you haven't ever lived in the state of Florida, you probably don't know that we have some major insurance issues going on right now. Um, this year, we've had a lot of insurance companies that have left the state and that's due to high claims. Um, of course, we do have a bunch of catastrophic events happen, and so I think that puts a lot of hardships on the insurance companies, but insurance is definitely something that's a con in uh, the area, and you're gonna wanna check that out when you come here. Another thing that is um, maybe a little bit different about insurance here in Florida is when you're purchasing a home, you're gonna need a four-point inspection and that's gonna be before you close. And that's gonna be an inspection of your HVAC, your electricity, your plumbing, and your roof. And that is just gonna um, make sure that your home is insurable and definitely something you, know, you need to know about when you're moving here. And then um, another con to insurance is if you live in a flood zone, you're gonna need flood insurance. And I know if, for me, I didn't really, I mean, I knew about flood insurance, but I never lived in an area that needed that. So here in Tampa, we are surrounded by water. We have lots of water um, and there are flood events. So you're gonna wanna know if your home that you're purchasing is in a flood zone and whether you're required to have flood insurance because that's gonna make the um, cost of the home, you know, can make it different. So you wanna make sure you know that. And then lastly, let's talk a little bit about auto insurance. So when we relocated here, I was really surprised when we switched over our auto insurance and it went up quite a bit. And I think one of the reasons is because there are a lot of uninsured motorists here and as well as a lot of accidents. So definitely check out your insurance. You wanna know if you're gonna need flood, you're gonna wanna make sure you get your four point inspection on your home, and you're gonna wanna know how much your auto insurance is gonna be um, 
when you move here. All right, so let's go over con number two, and that's gonna be alligators and bugs. So I'm gonna start with the alligators. So alligators, um, you hear it in the news quite a bit, and I think it's more drama than anything, but um, the only time I basically hear of somebody run, running into alligators or having issues with them is when they avoid the signs or they don't uh, you know, heed the warning that, hey, there's alligators, watch out. And if you're next to a body of water and it's not salt water, there's likely gonna be uh, alligators in there. And that's something that every native Floridian will tell you is look, don't go around bushes or you know, ponds and lakes where you know, there's gonna be alligators. A lot of times tourists or people that uh, don't live here year round uh, run into alligators and have accidents with them. So, you know, just be cautious whenever you're around a body of water basically. And, and if you do that, it's like any normal place to live. Yeah, so just heed the warnings of if there's a body of water and it's not the ocean, then there's probably an alligator in it. So stay away, just stay back. Don't let your dog go up to the water don't let your little children go near the water because there could be an alligator in there. And I think that keeps it simple. Yeah, absolutely. Another part of con number two is the bugs. So here in Tampa, we have a lot of types of bugs. We're gonna go over just a few of them just so you know a little bit about what to expect. One of them is a palmetto bug. Um, palmetto bugs are like giant flying cockroaches. Um, I think they're probably harmless. Um, but they're startling. So if you get one in your home, you, you'll you be startled probably. And they move pretty fast. So you just gotta, I put a cup over them. I don't know, I don't know how everybody else handles them, but that's what I do. I put a cup or a bowl over them and call Jason. But overall, they're not that bad. I, I don't think we've right. had, uh, you know, I think we hear a lot about them and I, you see them in the media sometimes or social media, but they haven't been that bad here. And we have a service that you know, if you have a service that goes around your house and uh, takes care of them. Yeah, just really regular pest deal. control. Yeah. I mean, it's simple. Um, so the second part of that is mosquitoes. Mosquitoes are a big deal here, but they're not all year round. I wouldn't say they're all year round. No, no. Um, but they do get pretty bad in the rainy season, which is right now. Um, so lots of mosquitoes. Um, we have a son that is allergic to the mosquito bites. So it's kind of tough on him because when he plays outside at school and stuff, he does get a lot of bites. So right now he's having to wear pants and it's like 90 degrees. So not the greatest situation, but I'm sure you heard, you've heard of mosquitoes before and you know how to protect yourself from those and what to do to take care of them. You know, you want to keep standing water out of the way and, you know. And I think they they started doing GMO or... Uh what is it? Genetically modified Genetically, organisms yeah. of mosquitoes. Um, they released a bunch in the Florida Keys. All males or? All males. So it's a type of mosquito that only produces male offspring. So the female mosquito is the only one that bites. So weird, right? So we'll see how that goes. Um, and then another part of it is we have uh, something called love bugs. And those can be a little bit of a nuisance, but they're seasonal. So I think they start at the uh, end of spring, maybe beginning of summer, somewhere around there. I know it's in the springtime. And they're, they're just high volume. They're everywhere. They, they like consume your car and they're just big and gnarly. And when you get two of them hooked up, boy, <laughs> and you got a bunch of... Yeah, they're yeah. everywhere. And they, like one of the big problems with them is that they get on your car and then if you don't watch, wash them off soon, then they'll leave a mark on your car, which is gross. So love bugs aren't so loving. <laughs> right, so the last nuisance or bug that uh, is, you know, a pretty big deal here is termites. Termites, you know, wood infestation is, is a bad thing to have. And anytime uh, termites are in your house, we get them a lot down here in Florida. They're, you go down the street and there's always at least one house tented from termites in the neighborhood or, you know, around your city. So termites are a big deal and of course they can cause so much damage. As long, what we found is as long as you have your house, um, you know, inspected on a regular basis, a couple times a year by a termite company, uh, you know, that's the best thing to do for your investment in your house. Um, but other than that, I think, you know, they're not that bad unless yeah. they start attacking your house. Yeah, and I think, you know, just be aware of them and if you need treatment, get treatment and yeah. I think it's pretty easy fix after that. 
Okay, moving on to con number three, the weather. So I know we said the weather was a pro, but there's also a con side to it as well. So as you know, Florida is known for hurricane season, right? So every year there's a hurricane season. It starts in June and it goes through November. And really, um, I mean, it is something that you wanna be aware of and you wanna know how to be prepared. The good news is um, your city will prepare you or your county will prepare you and tell you what you need to do. And then if you're in an evacuation zone, they will let you know when you need to go. The other thing that's great about hurricanes is you usually know if one is coming like a week in advance. So you have plenty of time to plan and prepare for it. It's not like something that just happens suddenly and you need to you know, have an emergency exit. So that's a really good thing about it. Another um, good thing about hurricanes is that they don't happen often in the same places. So the last time there was a major hurricane in Tampa was over a hundred years ago. So that kind of calms me down and made me feel better about moving to the area. Um, there was a catastrophic hurricane last year, just two hours south of us in the Fort Myers area. I'm sure you've heard about that. And that was Hurricane Ian. And it was actually predicted to come to this area. So we actually did have to prepare and um, evacuate. So as long as you heed the warnings and things like that, you're gonna be okay and just hope that one doesn't come and you know we never know when that's going to happen yeah but you know i would say that i'm i was born and raised in california and earthquakes hit you know in the middle of the night all times of the days and you never get a warning so i think when i consider other natural disasters or you know uh, things that can happen uh, in different areas like california earthquakes or tornadoes in kansas city where we're from mm -hmm. Um, you know, those things happen without really any warning. I mean, tornadoes hit all the time and we never got warnings. I mean, they thought they were giving us warning, but like they weren't. They were usually delayed and the sirens were going off when, you know, the storm cloud had passed. So that was always horrible. But here the hurricanes that you do get a lot of warning. And I think, you know, what you're saying is the same way I feel. It's like, well, I'd rather have a warning. Mm -hmm. And if and we usually pack up and, you know, head to a hotel or head out of town. We've headed to Orlando. So as long as you do that, I think it's really not that bad. Just something to be prepared for, I think. Yeah, definitely. So I would say here in Florida, you just gotta be a little more prepared and plan ahead. Yeah. So another part of the weather that can be tough, but it's to us it's not really a a big deal but we want to go ahead and mention it because it is a big deal to some people and that is the heat and the humidity um, it does get hot and steamy here and um, I don't mind it and you know you're just gonna want to make sure you can either be in the pool in the ocean or in the air conditioning um, I think it's a short part of the year that it's hot and humid and remember because we're closer to the uh, coast, you're going to get more of a breeze and it's not going to be as hot as it would if you were more inland, like somewhere like Orlando. So the heat and humidity can be a thing, but not really. Yeah. And one pro tip that I would say right off the bat, plan on having a dehumidifier. We have one running 24 hours in our house and we have it set at 50% usually year round. And so it doesn't run all year or every day, all day, but it certainly makes it very comfortable in the house and it cuts down the humidity so it doesn't even feel like we're you know somewhere where it's that humid yeah moving on to con number four the traffic what do you know about the traffic uh well you know it can be bad it was certainly bad prior to the pandemic um but it's gotten better since then for some reason i don't know probably because the hybrid workers or the workers from home but um you know we have a couple things that are a little bit different uh, than most areas, which is the vacationers. Tourism is huge, as we mentioned in our economy piece, but uh, with all the tourists and um, you know people vacationing down here, you run into a lot of people that aren't familiar with the area. And as Amy says, when you're on vacation, you're on vacation. And so, you know, Floridians have a, a lot of respect and consideration for our tourism. You know, it spurs our economy and we love people to visit here and that's no secret. So, you know, 
we're patient and we just make sure that you know when it's a holiday or vacation time that we're careful. The other part of it is the short-term residents here. We have a big population that come down here for six months or four months and that's generally during the winter time and you know two or three weeks you realize hey this is the time that those visitors are here and you know those people it's great to have them down here as well and um, you know you just gotta be a little bit more defensive and know for a couple weeks it's gonna be you know people down here driving that aren't used to a lot of our traffic yeah it's just a different uh, driving pattern or traffic pattern and I think it's just something that you know, you get used to as you live here and you'll recognize it like at first, like when um, a lot of the part-time uh, residents show up here in the winter, you're suddenly like, oh my goodness, where are these people coming from and why is there so much traffic? And then you realize, oh, it's because, you know, they've moved back for the winter. And then it kind of just evens out a little bit and you forget about it. And then the funny thing is whenever, uh, like April comes around, they leave and go home and then you're like, where's all the traffic again? So it's kind of a funny thing. You'll notice it. And I think traffic is just something that you should expect. It's not constant, but there can be traffic, um, you know, every single day, you know, and you just got to be ready for it. It's just a part of living here. One thing I will mention before we end here is the bridges. Bridges, if you've not driven across a big body of water like uh, the Tampa Bay, we have four or five major bridges that cross one way or the other, and those can be a bit challenging, you know. And one thing that we always suggest as a pro tip for possibly relocating here to Tampa is consider when you know you're going to live on one side. Let's say you're going to live in Tampa and Hillsboro, and you're going to drive across to Pinellas to your job every day. That's twice a day you're going to have to go over those bridges. So you want to make sure that you're totally comfortable and you know. Uh, crossing those bridges on a daily basis is not going to be an issue. So definitely something you want to check out and make sure you're comfortable with, or at least find a route that's going to be best for you. Yeah, I think that's right. So overall, Amy and I decided that the opportunity and lifestyle here in Tampa Bay far outweighed any opportunity that was in Kansas City. Yeah, so the housing is more expensive, but you have no state income tax. And like he said, the opportunities far outweigh what was available to us in Kansas City. So that's a wrap on the pros and cons of living in Tampa. Jason and I, we love helping people just like you make your transition to the area a smooth one. We relocated here from Kansas City a few years ago with our own family. And we did a lot of research before we came here and we still had some surprises. So we hope this information is helpful to you and don't forget, whether you're moving here in nine days or 90 days, pick up the phone, give us a call, shoot us a text, send us an email, or set up a Zoom meeting so we can sit in front of you and go over all the things that you're looking for in a new home and answer any questions you have about living here in Tampa Bay. We hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.